Slay the Spire without using any cards. My goal with this channel is to make unique and super difficult challenges, but sometimes I think of challenges that rely less on skill and strategy and a whole lot more on RNG, like astronomically unlikely RNG. So I decided to make these challenges a separate series where I modify the game or skip an RNG intensive section of a challenge run while explaining the insane luck I would have needed. In this case, I'll be using a mod later in the video to change my RNG, so I want to be clear that this is not a legit run, but I wanted to find out if this was possible no matter how unlikely. In theory, can you beat Slay the Spire without cards? When doing a challenge like this, I usually try doing it legit for about 3 hours, and then I think, okay, I should probably get a video out before the sun explodes if I can, and just move on to another challenge run. But my strategy during these first 3 hours consisted of this. Pick the defect since he does 3 damage at the end of every turn without using a card. At the start of the run, I needed to get the option for Niao's Lament. This makes it so enemies in the first 3 combats will have 1 health, which means my 3 damage will be enough to win the combat before taking too much damage myself or dying. I pick a path with an elite in these first 3 combats. This typically means going to unknown floors which are also helpful since they can give necessary resources like gold, potions, and relics for some events. Speaking of potions, enemies have a 40% chance to drop one and this chance goes up by 10% if you don't get one and down 10% if you do. But even if you get one, it might not be helpful and even if it is, a different one probably would have been better. Originally, I tried this months ago, so it was a different version and it was a lot more consistent. I deleted most of that old footage, so I had to re-record some to show what I'm talking about and I noticed that right away. Finding a layout with an elite in the first three combats is rare enough now, but now this guy's got the nerve to heal at the end of his turn. This would almost never get me past the next combat after Niao's Lament wore off, so I had to change something if I wanted to continue this challenge. At first, I didn't want to go all in with the RNG changing and wasn't entirely sure how RNG worked in Slay the Spire, so I didn't want to unknowingly do something impossible, just improbable. The system I used was to allow myself the use of base mod to switch a relic or potion of the same rarity on the reward screen and shop. So for example, if I saw an uncommon relic like gold plated cables, I could switch it out for another uncommon relic like mercury hourglass. Or maybe switch a 145 gold common relic like art of war after buying it by using base mod to remove the relic and once again use base mod to give me a relic from the same rarity of my choice. I would just pick up a potion and change it to whatever I needed of the same rarity when I needed it. Using this method I was able to consistently make it to the first act boss, especially thanks to Ori Kalkum and the mercury hourglass. Actually, beating the boss, however, was just not happening. They do too much damage too fast and take too little damage themselves. After even more hours of trying and not being able to get past the first act, I had little hope for this challenge. It wasn't that I thought it was impossible, I thought the likelihood of it happening would take way too much of my time and just not be worth it. But that's when three days ago comes in, and I thought to myself, in a most clever manner, what if I cheat more? This time I actually did my research into the RNG. Even if it was insanely unlikely, I still wanted to see if this game could theoretically be beaten without cards. Let's go through what a complete run without using cards and having perfect RNG would look like. First, I get Niao's Lament like usual, and pick a path with an unknown floor before a shop, and an elite within the first three combats. Floor 1 is instantly cleared. The way gold works after normal combat is that you get 10 to 20 gold, so after normal combat I'll always give myself 20 gold. There's a 40% chance a potion will drop and a 10% chance the potion will be rare. I'll always be giving myself the potion in Tropic Brew, which will fill all my potion slots with random potions from any rarity, including multiple uncommons or rares. Next up is an unknown floor, and it actually just so happens that this is the event I want. 
By damaging myself, I have a chance to get a relic. And what do you know, old coin is a relic that will give me 300 gold. How lucky. And on my first attempt too. Oh no way, the next event is face trader, meaning I'm able to get face of cleric to continuously raise my maximum health. Next up is the shop, and there's a lot to cover here. The membership card halves the price of all items in the shop. It's a common shop relic. Common relics can be between 143 gold and 157. The membership card is supposed to reduce prices right away, but I guess it didn't because of base mod? The next relic I need is the courier, which makes it so that the shop doesn't run out of things to sell and also reduces the price of everything by an additional 20%. The lowest price of an uncommon relic like this one is 238 gold, so I'll always be using that as the base number. Divide that by 2 for the membership card, and it's 119 gold. Next up is ceramic fish, so I get an additional 9 gold after combat. 70% off of 143 gold is 43. I do the same for bronze scales, so enemies take 3 damage after attacking me and Ori Calcum, so I gain 6 armor at the end of my turn. Niao's Lament is still active for the next 2 combats, so I clear a regular fight and an elite fight easily. Elites can drop 35 gold maximum, so I always add that much. The relics they drop can be any rarity, so I choose Mech, or the one that gives you 2 relics for the next 2 chests. The first real combat is up. With my relics I can get by without taking too much damage though. Another shop is up. It's better to only buy common relics for now, so I get Potion Belt, Data Disc, and Blood Vial. Combined they cost 129 gold. A large chest can have any relic and up to 82 gold, so I pick Mercury Hourglass and Tori. For the next event, I pick Golden Idol and take Injury, which actually gives me gold. And to get past the actual event, I pick Transform, since I thought it didn't matter, but looking back, I got 9 gold. That didn't end up mattering though. The next combat actually has a net health gain of 1, and because of my high health, I can keep fighting for more rewards. Before the bonfire, I'm at 44 health, so when I actually get to the boss, I'm at 63 with all of my potions. I just change potions that come out of Entropic potions to whatever I want other than itself since any potions except Entropic is possible to come out of it. I probably should have used more Liquid Bronze potions, but I used one so the boss would take more damage while I heal up the damage he does to me with regen potions. Bosses can drop up to 105 gold, and my boss relic of choice is the one that doubles the effectiveness of potions. The first fight on Act 2 does a lot of damage to me, mostly because I underestimated it, but that's not too big a deal since the potion it drops can make up for that. The event I choose is the Joust where I bet 50 gold to win 250. Time to spend. I buy Stone Calendar, Tungsten Rod, Emotion Ship, Incense Burner, Fossilized Helix, Captain's Wheel, and Paper Crane, going from 611 gold to 23. The combat with the birds is always pretty funny with reflect damage. After that is an event I just keep the same so I get some healing. I avoid an elite by going to a campfire and battle Sneko who does a little bit of damage to me. For my event, I choose the nest to gain 99 gold. For my next chest, I pick mango and white bee statue. I've got more money to spend. I buy anchor, toy or nithopter, strawberry, regal pillow, and horn cleat. I just use a liquid bronze potion to get through the next combat. I give myself prayer wheel by making the next event the mausoleum. And then wrongly gave myself another relic, because I thought another event gave me one for free, which is wrong. 
She might not have been put in my deck, but it was put in this video. After a while, I decided it'd be best to just smoke bomb from this combat. Once again, all I have to do for the boss is liquid bronze and heal up. The only boss relic left that's actually helpful is Tiny House. I decide to use a fire potion to finish the first fight without taking too much damage, so I'll be ready for the boss. That's because I'll be using an event to take me straight there. I instantly kill the boss refight to simulate the portal, which I know gives me extra health, so if I go down to 1 that's the same as dying. But teleporting there doubled my effects for some reason, so I had to teleport out, back into Act 3, kill some enemies, then get the actual portal, so now 2 health means I'm dead. I can just use all of my potions to give me all of the thorn damage, which is pretty funny and kinda cool. So yeah, it is possible to beat Slay the Spire without using any cards, but doing it legitimately is probably never going to happen. Unless there's some strategy I didn't think about that makes doing this without changing RNG realistic, which is totally possible. That was my first episode of In Theory. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. I've got more challenge runs I'm too stubborn to throw away coming up, and regular challenge runs too.